Welcome to the next exercise in this module. It's about the ideal um, multi-objective optimization. For this purpose, we use the plugin Octopus in Grasshopper. You need to download it for uh, at Food for Rhino. I provided you the download link. Um, remember to unblock the plugin before you copy it in your libraries folder and extract the zip file. After having installed Octopus, you can open again the enclosing circle multi-objective example. And we look at the um, pink or the, the, the pink boxes at the bottom part. And here you find the Octopus component. If you select it and Alt GR right mouse button. Uh, left mouse button tells you from where it comes from. So here you see the Octopus tab and the Octopus Optimizer um, grouped here with a lot of other very interesting optimization um, components. But we look into the simplest one, that's the Octopus component that contains more or less everything in it that we need for a multi-criteria optimization where we use um, the Pareto front. Um, how to use the plugin? Um, you can here plug in the a phenotype uh, which is um, the, used for visualization and here again you can get the multi-objective um, solution set as an output. But we don't use this input and output. Um, what we are interested in is how to plug in the genotype. So you may remember it from Galapagos that we need to link the parameters in a special way. So here you can drag and drop from clicking on the G for genome and link it to the first um, parameter that we use. So for example the x-coordinate and for linking a, oops, a second one you need to press the shift button and move it to the second parameter and then you do have to, then you have to find the two x and y parameters as, a, as the gene pool. By the way you can also um, use this component if you don't want to have a long list of individual sliders. So here um, the gene pool component allows you to generate a set of um, different genes in a certain range, decimal, um, or integer values and you have here a set of genes that you can randomize um, for the initial setup. Okay, we don't need this but just for your information um, there is this gene pool. What's more interesting now is the octopus component itself. Um, the objective values are linked um, by adding the objectives from the O input. Again, we need to um, drag and drop the um, link from the octopus to the objectives. Um, be aware that octopus is maximizing the um, objective functions. Therefore I added here um, again the inversion from minimizing the area of our enclosing bounding circle um, to be a maximization problem. This is been done by um, one division, division by the value uh, by the objective value. 
Again, here um, we maximize the distance between the center of our enclosing circle and the center of the point cloud. So remember, Octopus is using maximization, so you need to prepare the outcomes of your fitness functions in an appropriate way. Now, to run Octopus, you double click on the component and it opens the Octopus um, optimization interface. Here we see the objective space, it's empty and you can navigate by with the right mouse button and click on it and it rotates and with the mouse wheel you can zoom and pressing the shift button and the right mouse button you can pan the viewport. On the right hand side you have the settings um, for the optimization itself. So elitism means that you copy the best um, individuals from a population to the next generation. Um, the mutation uh, rate and probability crossover rate. So these are the aspects that you are already familiar with, the operators of the evolutionary algorithm and the population size itself. Here you see the statistics on the generations that you have run and so on and so on. Um, you can minimize the Rhino viewport to um, have a faster optimization because then you don't need to update the viewport. Here you uh, select the selection operator of the evolutionary algorithm. That's now the special implementation for um, the multi-criteria optimization because basically it's the selecting operator that is adapted to ensure that we cover the Pareto front and that we select the non-dominated solutions over the dominated ones. And on the left hand side you have a few um, visualization options that we will explore as, we, as soon as we have a set of solutions. And to get this we just press the start button. Now it's minimizing um, the Rhino viewport and here you see the um, octopus start stop and in the background we see the generated variants so that's enough for me for now and now it brings back the rhino in a different view okay now we have generated a set of solutions on the Pareto front so that's what um, is shown here and I can, because I don't need the 3D viewport, I can switch to 2D by double clicking here on this icon and we can pan here. So we see the axis 1, um, that's the circle area and the axis 2 is the distance to the center. These are my um, objectives in this objective space. You can also visualize the history. Um, we have computed a few generations and here you see all the dominated variants um, that have been computed. So that's our um, objective space over the generations. So here we have five generations. Here you see it as well. Of course we can generate more. Um, there are a lot of options in Octopus that I cannot explain in the context of this exercise. Please um, use the uh, provided information and documentation if you download Octopus. There is um, in the folder of the examples and um, there are a lot of example files also for the multi-objective optimization and there is a PDF that explains the basic functions of Octopus. Um, what's important for us is to look into um, the generated variants and to select 
the one that we want to use. How to do this? Um, we can zoom in and select one of these boxes. We can now go close to one extreme and say reinstate a solution. And you see now we are here at the axis that um, maximizes the distance to the center. So it um, is the point very close to the edge of my point cloud so far away from the center. And if we go to the other side here, we also have the name of the axis, the circle area. So this extreme should be the smallest area. So here we see this is the minimal enclosing circle. So obviously this can still be improved. So we can continue with the optimization to get better results. Um, but so far um, we can explore the um, Pareto optimal solutions. So since we know there are better extreme optima, um, we know that this is only a local Pareto front. Um, but anyway, the function to explore it, that's what I wanted to show you here. And to play around with the options, you can also explore here different options. Um, in order to visualize the selected variant, I added here this part, um, which basically takes out the phenotype. So these are the solution um, space parameters or the design space parameters, same. And this is, are the, these are the x and y coordinates of our center point. So what we do is just to um, take out the coordinates x and y, the first and the second um, entry in the list, and add it as x and y center point for our circle and just draw it in order to see what Octopus is doing. Okay, with this, um, I'm at the end of this exercise. I hope you have a basic understanding how to use Octopus, how to link the functions that you find in Octopus to the theory of multi-criteria optimization, especially the idealistic multi-criteria optimization, and how to deal with the Pareto front, what it means, and um, what I've not shown you, if you add a third objective, then you don't have a two-dimensional objective uh, Pareto front only, then you have a three-dimensional Pareto surface. And you can imagine to cover the three-dimensional surface is much more complicated, needs much more iterations, generations in the evolutionary optimization to get a meaningful result. And if you add a fourth um, objective, then you have a four-dimensional surface, um, which is difficult to visualize. Um, but important is to understand that the uh, amount of possibilities um, to find or to cover the uh, Pareto surface becomes extremely large the more objectives you use. So usually multi-objective optimization is restricted to maximum a handful of objectives. Otherwise, it's not really handable um, to explore a design space in a meaningful amount of time. But it primarily depends on the time that you need to evaluate a design variant. If you have a very fast evaluation, and in our case it is, then you can evaluate more. If you need to make a complicated evaluation like a solar radiation analysis, then you cannot evaluate so many variants that you can explore a huge design space. What I want to ask you is to use this definition and to come up with your own problem, implement your own problem, and make sure you have an idea of the um, fitness landscape Ideally, visualize it in a way that I've shown you um, and link the um, design space, the parameters, the genes to Octopus 
and define your own objective values and link it to Octopus. Be aware Octopus is maximizing the objectives and run your own optimization. That's really important to um, get an understanding of this method and um, create your own ideas how to include it into your own design projects because in the very end all this optimization stuff shall be um, used to support you during your design process. Therefore you need to work with it in a um, kind of a natural way um, that you get used to it. So enjoy exploring the possibilities of multi-criteria optimization.